welcome to the Judaism From Within podcast. I'm Simi Lerner. God's unity. Is there no greater philosophical statement of Jewish theology? Monotheism, the Shema that gives articulation to this. But a question must always follow. Yes, we have the philosophy. Yes, our mind, we have knowledge. But how does this blossom into action? In what way am I different with this piece of knowledge? In what way are my actions changed? How I orientate myself to the world? How is this different that I now have this principle behind me? A little bit of development is needed in the area of knowledge before we can articulate how it actually changes how we look at the world and thereby how we act in the world differently. Because the Shema, which is the source for what Rav Hirsch is discussing here for his second mitzvah, the unity of God, that phrase in and of itself isn't actually that meaningful. I'll explain what I mean. This classical phrase of Jewish monotheism, in essence, we're saying Hashem is one. But that in isolation isn't that meaningful because I'm one. There is only one Simi. And my dear listener, there is probably only one you. But if we think about this, we could ask any polytheist, an individual who believes in many gods, however abstract they may be, or however physical they may be, if we would go to the ancient Canaanites and say to them, is there only one Baal? They probably would say yes. If you would go to the Babylonians and say, is there only one Marduk? They would probably say yes, there is only one Marduk. In which case, when we say Hashem is one, we mean more than just the name. I know this is obvious, but let's develop it. We could very well be saying there are characteristics that we identify with the name Hashem, which exist only in Him. Now, this is where a key principle gets developed that we will see work its way throughout the rest of Rav Hirsch's work. When he says God, he means something specific. He doesn't just mean very powerful being. He means the source of existence, but the source of existence that is personal, that calls upon us as individuals and calls upon us in love and asks us to reciprocate that love. It is a God that calls upon us to act in the world in a certain way because he exemplifies these characteristics. There is only one of that. So, if we now understand that when we say God is one, the source of being, the source of existence, this infinite personal source of existence is only one. Now that as a package, how does that knowledge blossom forth? The picture Rav Hirsch gives of a pattern that follows through from this unified principle that starts off with what we mean by God, but then it follows through. It follows through to the personality and then follows through to the destiny or the goal of the individual. The way Rav Hirsch sees this unification of our personality as being a follow-through of the unification of God is both empowering and at the same time a little bit scary. The general way in which we understand how we act in the world is that we have these two conflicting forces within us, our Yitzhahara and our Yitzhatoiv. And this phrase, an inclination, almost like I'm being forced to do something because something I have within myself, Rav Hirsch always looked at as an oppressive and false notion. There isn't something bad within me that moves me to do evil. There is only me. And the term Yitzhah, Rav Hirsch points out from the point of view of the language of Hebrew, it doesn't work. Yitzhah isn't an active phrase, it's passive. A yetsa is something that is formed, not something that does the forming. And the reason why this is so key to point out, it stops you looking at yourself as being this sort of split, bifurcated being, but rather it allows you to look at yourself as a unified whole. You don't have an evil inclination inside you and a good inclination inside you. No, there is only you. You form the world to good or to evil. Yetsa is not a yoitsa. It's not someone who is forming. It is something that has been formed, is being formed, it is acted upon like clay in the hands of a potter or wood in the hands 
of a carpenter. You are the carpenter to the wood that is the raw material of existence that reveals itself towards you. That raw material of life that reveals itself towards you, you as a former form it to good or for evil. This unification of God as being the source filters itself down to you in Rav Hirsch's eyes to allow you to look at yourself as a single unified individual with free will. To give a practical illustration of this, and I think it's very reflective of how we experience the world, the world appears before us. I wake up in the morning, I go downstairs, I see an event in front of me. I can, by the force of my own will, change the situation. I can say something, I can do something, I can change the world in front of me, and I can make it a good situation, and I can make it a bad situation. I have that power. That is how we should look at ourselves as individuals. Not I come down the stairs and something inside me is pushing me to make a bad decision, or something inside me is pushing me to say, oh no, do something good. No, the world appears to me, and I choose. A simple change of perception of how you look at yourself as an individual is so empowering. So we've dealt with where it comes from. We've dealt with how that follows through into humanity, that unified concept. But then where is it going? A specific purpose. This is key. Like it all comes from one point, the great adventure is leading in one direction. The Jewish people, the world, in essence, have a goal. We're supposed to be developing ourselves and developing society along a certain direction. That direction and that goal is unified. There is one aim and it is all working itself towards. This idea of unity plays itself out on every level of this discussion at the very beginning of the pyramid. The unification of what we mean by God works itself up towards you as an individual, not as a split, not as a bifurcated, split personality, your good side and your evil side. No, that unity that started works its way through you as an emissary of it. You are the one who is living out this goal as a unified individual and you have the ability to form the world in front of you for good or form the world in front of you for evil. And it is all working towards one goal, one unified point. So to summarize these three stages, what well, we began with discussing the idea of what we mean by God. Once again, that is going to have to be key if we're saying it's one. And we mean a set of categories of traits, a category of descriptions that there is only one of what the Jewish people mean by God is one. Then we work that way through, that everything then stems from that one source. Okay, why is that interesting? Because it means you look at yourself as being an individual, as a unified whole, not split. Not this idea of you are being forced. The phrase he uses, it's like a cord that has been tied around humanity. This idea of an inclination, or you are being compelled to do evil. No, we are tempted, of course, but the temptation comes from the outside not from within us. Us as individuals form the world for good or for evil as it arises before us. That is a heavy responsibility. It stops being part of who I am, but I am the one who is choosing. Of course, I am tempted by what appears to me, but it is my job to turn it to good, not turn it to evil. Thereby, I serve God with my entirety of my being. And it is all working its way to one goal. And this is also important. Because any action in life requires a goal, even in the most basic sense. If you want to do anything, you have to have a purpose, you have to have a goal. Even if it means when you get up in the morning, where are you going to go or what are you going to do, is determined by the goals you set in front of you for the course of the day. Even the chicken crossing the road. The chicken felt that across the road was better than where he was now. There's a set of values that went into that. So too with us. The goal that is put before us helps us form our values, helps us form that unique individual that is us. We are formed and we are enriched by the goal that we are working our way towards. The goal that is put before us, this unified goal, not a diverse set of goals. No, there is one goal that we are all working towards. And with that goal in mind, we develop this unique individual, which is the human being. And we form the world to good or for evil, depending if we succeed or if we fail. 
but because we're working ourselves towards one goal in the distance, we allow that goal to reflect the values that take us along it into ourselves as individuals. We grow and we become better people, and thereby how we act in the world with these lenses of ourselves as being responsible, as ourselves as being a unified whole, all emerging from that one idea of the unity of God. The next podcast, once again, a standalone idea. Idolatry, the third mitzvah from Rav Hirsch. What is idolatry? And how does that relate to the death of God and the crumbling of values? Find out in the next episode. Have a wonderful week.